Hi, I'm Steve from the Oasis site, and today we're continuing in 1 Peter. We're looking at verses at the end of chapter 1 and the beginning of chapter 2. And these verses start with the word therefore. And whenever you read therefore in the Bible, you need to look up what it's there for. And that means looking at what went before. And this, in this case, it's all about the amazing, gracious gift of a free start in life through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without that backdrop, if we just start with these verses, they are very daunting. They command us to be holy as God is holy. They talk about us purifying ourselves and other very good things that we need to do and not to do. However, these verses are not setting out the standard we need to reach to make us acceptable to God. Instead, they're showing us, as those who have been inwardly changed by the power of God, how to live freely and fruitfully. Essentially, they are saying, be who you are now. Live out your new identity. And these verses reveal three ways in which our new identity shines out. Firstly, holiness. Now, holiness can sound scary and somehow unreachable, but really it's simply being like Jesus. He's the happiest, freest, and most peaceful and holy person who has ever lived. Who wouldn't want to be like him? And these verses appeal to us not to slip back into things that used to dominate us before we came to know Jesus. We need to resist the world's attempts to squeeze us back into its mould. Instead, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we're to control our desires rather than being controlled by them. These verses also talk about putting things away. It's like throwing off dirty old clothes. And all of these things help us to grow in holiness. Secondly, being who we are now means living in the fear of God. Our loving God is also our judge and he will assess the lives of both unbelievers and believers. For us as believers, the, the assessment isn't to do with condemnation. Eternal judgment has passed over us because Jesus gave his life for us as our sacrificial lamb. He paid the price to set us free from slavery to sin. But there will be a reward for our good works. And so this end time assessment should motivate us to live with a healthy, reverential fear of God, making the most of our time and the opportunities we have to serve him. Our good works don't save us. Instead, they're the natural overflow and evidence that God has changed our hearts. Thirdly, being who we are now means living a life of love. No surprises there. Plenty of verses in the Bible about our need to love one another. But again, these verses make it very clear that love isn't the prerequisite for God to love us. We are urged to love others sincerely and earnestly. But the words it uses is, since you have been born again. We love each other and others because he first loved us. We love because we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good today. Our verses today have a glorious finale. If as God's people we are growing in these areas together, then increasingly we become a wonderful house for God, made out of living stones, that's you and me. And together we're filled with the glory of God, with Jesus right at the heart of it all. This is what it means to be his people. This is what it means to be his church. Let me, let me remind you of who we now are. These are the last few verses of the passage that we're exploring today. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people 
for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. These are wonderful verses. This is who you are now, and this is who we are now. Let's live it out together today for Jesus. God bless you.